programs like AutoCAD, SketchUp, and Rhino have completely changed the way architects design and document buildings, and the modern digital office now depends on them. But what if you became an architect because you love to draw, and you still do your best thinking with a pencil in hand? Is there still a place in the modern digital office for designing and drawing by hand? For me, the answer is yes. Both the pencil and the computer are tools, and you should use the right tool for the right job when you need it. So in today's video, I'll show you eight ways I start my designs in Procreate, then switch to SketchUp or Rhino to take the design to the next level. I always start designing by making small sketches based on a big idea or simple concept. The inspiration for this design is a restaurant in Amsterdam called De Kass. I love the simplicity and boldness of these forms, so I'm going to try to fit a conventional 3,000 square foot house into a collection of greenhouse forms with this simple industrial vibe. Once I finish my diagram, I import it into Procreate and continue to develop the idea using layers like tracing paper, estimating proportions and dimensions by eye to gradually make the plan more accurate. If I need help doing this, I can always import one of my architectural scales and double check any crucial dimensions. There are also many times when I will use the rectangular selection tool to quickly fill areas of the plan with different colors to help me understand how the parts of the plan are working together or to make it visually more fun to calculate square footages and make sure the design isn't going over the budget. Of course, I often go a step further and use color to differentiate between the materials of the plan and the built-ins and the furniture. And it's really fun to add colors and shadows to the site anytime you need an eye-catching rendered site plan to present to the client. Because Procreate is as much a digital painting tool as a useful design tool, and because my plan sketch is already in Procreate, I'm able to create one of these rendered plans many times more quickly than back in the day when you had to either render the plan with color pencils or use Photoshop to import a plan, then select and fill the different areas of color. Once I have the plan in shape, the layers feature of Procreate makes it simple to project the elevations to the side of the plans and to quickly test if my ideas are still on target. Remember, I'm going for an industrial greenhouse vibe here, so I need to make sure the proportions of the elevations and the roof slopes are similar enough to my inspiration images. And this also lets me take a first shot at determining the rhythm of the mullions and the glass areas and how I might develop the chimneys and what materials to use for the solid parts of the house in between the glass areas. Of course, once you have the floor plan, it's easy to generate a roof plan by simply adding new layers to the top of the stack then selecting and filling a rectangle representing each solid and transparent section of the roof. Studying a roof plan at this early stage may seem premature, but it gets me thinking about important problems that will have to be solved down the road, like how to drain water off the roof and how the chimneys will fit in with the other roofs. It also allows me once again to create a memorable little rendered and shadowed site plan in almost no time, which can help to clarify the design concept and get the client on board for this rather unusual, but I hope seriously fun idea for a house. Given the ease of cutting and pasting in Procreate, it's also extremely useful for another very important part of the design process, namely the cost cutting to be expected after the contractor determines your original design is too expensive. To that end, Procreate gives you the ability to cut paste and move around parts of your design to study smaller, cheaper versions before the contractor prices the project. The last step I take in Procreate before switching to SketchUp or Rhino is to redline and dimension the floor plan freehand one last time. This gives me the opportunity to kind of crawl over the plan one room at a time, arranging furniture, setting critical dimensions, and basically making the project very real in my mind before a plan that might otherwise have been too general makes its way into the system. Because the iPad is small and because you can pinch and zoom to enlarge any area of the drawing, you can take this kind of work anywhere. And it's much more likely that someone will pay attention to these important details when it's easy and convenient to do it. 
And of course, once you've worked out all the important details and dimensions ahead of time, building the model in 3D becomes much easier. And in fact, two or more people can build different parts of the model, so long as they're working off the same set of dimensions. Once I've dimensioned the plan, I import it into SketchUp, scale it to the proper size, and build the model using the drawing as a guide, but deferring to the numbers when the numbers in the drawing conflict. I'll move that Procreate layer up or down from the model and hide it while I'm working, but I make sure it's always in vertical alignment if I need to refer to it later. To learn more about how I use custom downloadable grid templates and scales to create accurately dimensioned drawings prior to 3D development in SketchUp or Rhino, check out the video above and be sure to download the one-click interactive guide to all the videos on this channel at the link in the description below.